What's up everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. My name is Asterix, and this is an InShot tutorial. InShot's an application that I've been using since high school. I scoured everywhere looking for a quick, easy to use, and good quality video editing program for mobile. This app can be used for numerous video creation ideas. I've made montages, commentaries, and even promotional clips from my social media and my YouTube channel using this app from my phone. It's a great alternative for whenever you have footage but you just don't have your PC or the time to go into an in-depth edit, and want something that's clean, will send a message, and is overall quick to use. When you open up InShot, you're greeted with a very clean and straightforward user interface. Today, we're only going to be dealing with the video, as you can see on the left. But, don't forget, if we take a step back, we can look at the marketplace, where they also have free material. You can find filters, effects, stickers, and even fonts here, to use inside of your videos. Personally, I've never used any of this stuff, but it's worth giving a look into. Now back to the topic at hand. Let's look at the videos. When you click videos, you immediately are greeted with all of your previous projects, which is nice because you can go back and edit them if you need to. Next, we will be creating a new project. This will allow us to pull in footage to edit, but first we have to find it. If you don't happen to find the footage that you're looking for on the given panel, then you can click the recent drop-down box that's presented at the bottom of the screen to search for other areas on your device. It'll even let you pull from OneDrive or Google Drive, which is a great place to put your footage. After selecting your footage, remember to hit the check mark so that you can proceed on to the editing process. The first thing I would like to point out is what I call the position tracker. This shows you exactly where you are within your clip. Using this, you can scroll right and left to travel throughout your clip, making sure that your edits are in the exact spot you want them to be. Now let's go over the different types of trimming tools, because there's three. There are many different uses for these tools, starting off with the regular trimming tool, which will allow you to shorten either end of your clip, allowing you to start your clip later or end it earlier with ease. This is an essential tool for making montages. To use any of these tools, just hold down and move either end of the green box. Secondly, there's the cutting tool, which will allow you to cut any portion out of the middle of your clip. So for example, if there's idle space that you want out of the middle, you can get rid of it easily. Lastly, there's the splitting tool, which will allow you to choose any portion of your original clip and split it into as many pieces as you want to do various things with. For instance, if you want to switch parts around in your video, you would split them up first so you could do so. Remember that in order to save your changes, you have to click the check mark. Try to remember that every time you finish using the tool, you'll be brought right back to the original panel, where you can see our position tracker. Next, we're going to be going over Canvas, a process that is extremely faster than what you'd have to do on your computer. From here, you can see all the different types of canvassing that InShot provides. Not only that, but it also gives you a good variety of aspect ratio to choose from. So, if you're trying to upload to your favorite platform, you can style it to fit. I love this for Instagram, because I can have a blurred outer border to put text on without compromising any of my actual content, giving me even more room to edit my clips and make it me. Finally, we can use the bar at the bottom to resize our actual clip, which is fun to play around with. Remember that you can always use the right check mark to save a single clip, or you can use the left check mark to apply the changes to all of the clips in your project. Next, let's look at filters. In this section, we can look at all of the filters, effects, and adjustments that InShop provides. Be careful when going into this, because some of them towards the end are microtransactions, and they tend to be the better ones, obviously. Remember, you can also change the strength of the filters too. But what I really want to look at here is the effects, because everybody loves effects in a gaming video. I want to take a second to admire the usefulness of these effects within InShot. Some of you might be thinking, well, what's the good of having a video if people can't see what's going on due to an effect that's going over the entire thing? A great way to use some of these effects is as transitions. You can take a very small split of a clip and then give it an effect that will then transition into something else in order to give your video a nice spicy transition that catches the viewers off guard. It might not seem like a lot, but give it a shot and see if you can be creative enough to make it work. I'm not going to go over adjustments just because they're the same adjustments that you would see on your regular phone editor. Next is music. This one I feel is pretty self-explanatory. You can choose from a selection of three different audio groups, the first of which being the audio that InShot offers you to use. Secondly, your personal audio, which would be coming from your phone, which you can download or put from the cloud, pull from SoundCloud, etc. Thirdly, is their sound effects repository, which has actually got a pretty good amount of sound effects that would be really good for commentary use. Next is for stickers and text. I'm gonna go ahead and merge both of these just because they're basically exactly the same. InShot offers a ton of different stickers to choose from, and like the text, you can resize and rotate these as much as you want with no boundaries. Additionally, you can find seasonal, special, and other types of stickers in the marketplace for about 99 cents a pack. To edit your chosen sticker, you'll tap on the sticker after it's in the project, and you can drag to resize, or you can rotate by simply moving your finger in rotation around the sticker. It's very user-friendly. When we look at the text portion, you'll also notice that you can 
add your own emojis or emojicon figures if you really want to, so you don't really need to use their sticker portion. You're given a good variety of different fonts to choose from, and additionally, you can change the aspects of these fonts as well, to make them bold, italicized, or even cross through. Not only that, but for the text portion, you can give each of your texts an effect. You can make them wobble, come in with a transition, or even leave with a transition. Go ahead and check them all out. Next, we're going to go over background. Many of you have probably realized this by now, that the background of your project is just a blurred repeat of whatever clip is playing. You can change this here by changing the intensity of the blur, changing the background to a color, or by choosing something from your gallery to change the background to. The last of these that we're going to look at is the crop. I find this interesting because the application is one of the only ones that I've found that allows you to do, crop the dimensions of a video. Cropping a picture is easy, why can't we just do it for a video? When we're finished with our editing, we just click save at the top right, at which point it'll ask what kind of resolution we want, and we always want 1080p. So, this has been our tutorial for InShot. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like, sub, and comment. Until next time guys, peace out.